are you doing these type of videos? Yeah, Why are you doing pressure. this? I was under pressure. Yeah. Anyone who knows me, would know that. I used yeah. to be in a club all the time. When, when he calls me, he goes, yeah. Hello, Dawa. Yeah, I don't know you for oh, that. That's oh, 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 hello. Ah, you know what? You see what? Yeah. Even though, even though, even even though, yeah. I've seen what you've done. I want to give you eighty grand. Build a school. I say no. You should try to come back to Africa. See if you can do some work there. So it went in. I heard what she said, but it didn't really. Well, I'm telling you now, me, me. I'm telling you now, Juma has saved me from haram so many times. You'll be chilling with some of the kids. You'll be like, what's wrong? Oh, I miss my parents. What do you say? Oh. Biryani with boti and yeah. with the... you got to understand. With the writer. You've got to have it with the writer, yeah. isn't Come it? Come on, bro. When we first become Muslim, the red rice, the green rice with the, the colorids, the pink, the pink milk. <laughs> yeah. That was our life. That was our life. But you know what, Aki? We thank Allah for that. Assalamu alaikum, guys, and welcome to this special episode of Declassified. Well, I have a very special guest with me today. It's none other than Abu Bakr Islam. Asalaamu Alaikum, bro. Waalaikumsalam wa rahmatullah. How's it going? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Good, Alhamdulillah. Good, good. Honestly, guys, it's been a very long. Long time. In fact, it's been so long that people don't even know how long it really is. <laughs> True. We, we've actually known each other about for about 10 years uh, longer but on YouTube our first video that we worked together on was actually uploaded was it for, was it 18th December 2009 long time subhanallah and that was the trailer for Roadside to Islam and uh, a lot of people don't know or didn't know that I was actually behind the scenes but the kind of story behind that was was quite interesting actually started, I don't know if you remember, actually started with uh, Muslim Palau, isn't it? What happened? Remind me, remind me, yeah. remind me. It was, um, I, I, I did, I uploaded a, a video using one of his, one of his raps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you edit, you edited I it. I edited yeah, it. Yeah, 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 then yeah, yeah. he messaged me saying, um, look, I've, I've got an album coming out. Can you do a few more videos of it? Mm -hmm. So he came, apparently they used to live SMS were down the road, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was easy, he just came on his moped. Mm. And then he came and he gave me a CD. And then um, I think through him, I then got to know you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was like, because I remember you were the first one in those days to be tackling the, the kind of street youth, mm -hmm. but using good quality equipment, like... Your camera was HD in a day in which HD was like a big deal. Um, and then I was like, look, it would be a, it, it would be an honor if we can kind of start working together. I don't know if I use the word honor. Nah, but I don't I, think you use the word honor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, you know what? Yeah. I like what that, mm -hmm. I, I like what that guy is doing. Um, you know, uh, can you put me in touch? It was something like that. But one of the most important things was you understood what I was trying to project to the people. Yeah. So it just made things really really easy you know it wasn't like yeah. i had to tell you too much stuff i just told you look we're going for the street look we're from the streets you understand what we're trying to do you said yes you produced the footage and it just it was just like a a match made in heaven mate that's it bro <laughs> serious that's it. to be honest i'd kind of although i wasn't from the street life i'm not gonna project myself as, as someone that i wasn't yeah but that don't mean anything at yeah. the end of the day even if you're not from the street life so to speak like you were doing street activity you grew up you grew up in the area was yeah. projected around the streets so you see you're seeing the streets whether you like it or not there's yeah. no way of avoiding it like this is your default sense yeah. you grew up in streatham you're seeing things every day so you understood and that's the most important thing at the end of the day not everybody who's from the street um doesn't mean you have to be from the street to know the street life mm. do you know what i mean you have to be a person from a certain community, from a certain area to go certain places and, and sense danger. Yeah, <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. You have to have that instinct. When you grow up in certain areas, you get that. So just because you, you, you might say, oh, I'm not from the streets. It's not really like that because you grew up in an environment where you're seeing that every day. So you, you, knew, you, knew, you knew what was going on out here. So that's, Plus, what, that's I, what matters. I, I think Roadside Islam was a good outlet for me as well because I think culturally, um, it, it was a culture that, he, as a youngster I kind of looked up to so to have an opportunity where I could use kind of um, 
my talents in editing to kind of live through that mm. i think it was that think, was good it was yeah good. It was yeah good. i think i think well, like, it was good alhamdulillah that, that, that was, good. was that was cool but what was very interesting was that people i guess wouldn't have associated us to be because i was under the banner of halal dawa records even now when when, when he calls me he goes yeah Halal Dawa. Yeah, I don't know you for oh, that. That's oh, oh, halal. Yeah. It's not Smile to Jannah. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know if it's Smile to Jannah. You guys might think, oh, Smile to Jannah. Nah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's Halal Dawa. It'll, yeah. it'll be written on my gravestone. <laughs> They'll be like, yeah, it's Ishan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> nah, it's, it's Halal. We don't know that one. It's no. Halal. And a lot of people don't know, bro. I, the, the thing is, when I came up with the name Halal Dawa, I spelled, <laughs> spelled Dawa wrong. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I easy. forgot the H, bro. So far, <laughs> I, never, I never even noticed that, bro. I never even noticed that, you know. D A W A. I never noticed it, you know. That's crazy. And it, crazy. And it kind of just stuck. What What was very interesting was genuinely, like it was a concern that I had that look our youth are being kind of misled but it wasn't done in an abstract way like oh we got to do something blah 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 i actively saw someone doing something and rather than starting something from scratch i thought why don't i just help him out because mm -hmm. he's doing a really good job mm -hmm. and when he started he started with excellence like mm -hmm. hd he would go he would make the effort and you know what you wouldn't see pictures of us posing or whatnot i guess social media wasn't as big or as narcissistic as it is now yeah like it's proper like let's take a selfie let's mm. let's post it and alhamdulillah it kind of gave us opportunity to hone in on our craft and really focus on our intentions yeah that's true that's and true. because alhamdulillah inshallah may allah accept the I fact mean. that we intended things the correct way alhamdulillah was it 10 years down the line yeah we're still we're still going strong yeah and new 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 windows have opened alhamdulillah alhamdulillah yeah. and new journeys and new trajectories have started no doubt. which we'll definitely be starting because it's been it's been a, a, a long road okay so let's um let's let's react to one of our <laughs> first <laughs> videos oh, now, <laughs> but we the, here, here's the background yeah so we wanted to do these short scenarios because we were like, look, short videos is where it's at. Mm. But the thing is, our acting wasn't at, <laughs> wasn't at that level. <laughs> and the thing is, now let's let's let's, let's just you're gonna just, kill me today, don't you? <laughs> just wanna you wanna embarrass me right now, don't you? Oh my goodness! Listen, that video was gangster. I'm telling you. Hey. You know what? You see what? Yeah. Even though, even though, even even though, yeah. Do you know it's crazy? No, you know it's crazy. You know it's crazy. You know it's crazy. Now nah, listen, listen. Jack's aside. Even right. though it's funny, yeah. But let me tell you something. You see that video? Yeah. How much people that video affected? That. Go on. Tell Jokes me, aside, right, you yeah. know how much people reach out to man, saying that when they used to watch these type of trailers, it used to make them think about changing their life because the whole idea was just putting like a battery in someone's back. Mm. Do you understand? Giving them some incentive to say, look, you can change. Obviously, where we're coming from the streets, coming from that type of lifestyle, and you had many people following us from that lifestyle trying to change. When they used to see these little messages, it was like a message of hope. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Because you have to remember, at that time, nobody was doing this type of stuff. Nobody. So mm. people who were coming from the street, people were becoming Muslim, and they were just like, what now? What do I do? Who do I look at? You're going into a masjid. Gap in the, market. the gap was too much. Like compared to now, it's quite different because now you got loads of Muslims who are rappers who are in this da 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 da. So you got too many examples. But at that time, how many examples did you have? Even if you look at celebrities like footballers and stuff like that, at that time, who was Muslim or footballer? You don't know if uh, anyone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So we got loads of so-called role models now compared to that time. Whereas the youth, when they were becoming Muslim, they had no one to look at. That's so true. we were like the only ones who were like okay we come from the streets 
it's hundred percent they know where we come from and we're actually trying to change. Mm. So people used to look at us as as a, like a like a lifeline. To be honest, so subhanallah. I look at that video; it's funny, but subhanallah, yeah. it was it was deep because if you go back to that time, the amount of messages, the emails, the interaction we used to get from young people, even people's parents used to hit us up. Can you help my child? Can you do this? Can you do that? So it was it was quite deep, you know. I feel like them videos served its purpose. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, at a time, hundred percent, it was needed because we, you know, when we were doing the street stuff, even we were being challenged by our, our elders in our community, the students of knowledge, all these type of people who have studied the Dean of Islam. Like, why are you doing these type of videos? Yeah, why are you doing this? I was under pressure. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I mean? I but it's only now many of those people mm. over the last few years they come back and say, you know what? I can actually see what you lot were doing now. Do you understand? Because now, uh, if you see the young people now, <laughs> yeah. it's a next level now. Who, who who are they listening to? They ain't listening to nobody. So mm. a lot of the lot of the people who used to criticize us have children who have grown up now, are going through them trials and tribulations, and they're seeing now, okay, now who can I direct my child to no watch? More to Islam, There's you know. no more roadside to Islam. There's nothing like it. So You know that's that's the sad thing. Like we're talking about ten years. Mm. Bro, ten years have passed. At that time, we uh, we were trying to fill a gap, and ten years later, the gap still isn't being filled. It's crazy, man. I don't think people appreciate how difficult it is to come from such a immodest, extravagant, irreligious, mm. violent. It's literally you push your senses to, to limits. Yeah, yeah. The amount of uh, you know sensual. No, not sensual. Your, the ecstasy felt by your senses in terms of drugs, in terms of money, in terms mm. of women, yeah. on a constant basis. Yeah. And to switch it off and then just to go cold turkey. Difficult, bro. Bro. And, 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 and that, mm. before, before you um, tell us how hard it is, the system itself is, de- is not designed to be in your favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For example, just a stat that I found in uh, Guardian September. Uh, September 17th September 2017th uh, Young blacks are nine times more likely than whites to be jailed You've got in Guardian January 2019 Half of the children um, inmates are ethnic Again Guardian January 19th More than half the people in prison are ethnic Mm -hmm. So you've got these uh, stats Now there's loads more but when you see the systems against you, the lifestyles against you, mm-hmm. but still you manage to come out, uh, how did you do it? Well, like you said, it's real. At the end of the day, being being black, growing up in London, like you said, the system is by default against us. Mm. You know, opportunities, all these type of things is limited for someone who's coming from this type of uh, community. And obviously for me, as well, I, I fitted all the stereotypes, gold teeth, and now I've got big beard, I'm black, I'm big. <laughs> so yeah. I've got every, everything is against me, do you understand? But you know, one of the the, the the key factors behind all of this is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because once you become a Muslim and you follow the religion, you follow Quran, you follow Sunnah, all these type of challenges, you look at them from a different perspective. Okay, for example, before you might, only look at things from a, a racial point of view. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Like, oh, I'm not they're not employing me because I'm black. Yeah, it may be true. Do you get what I mean? But that was the only avenue you had to look at. But now as a Muslim, I can say to myself, okay, maybe they're not going to employ me because of my race, but I know my risk is for my Lord. So I know there's money. There's something written for me. So that's enough to keep me going to make me get to where I need to get to. Do you get what I mean? Because mm. before I might just be thinking, you know what, I can't live a legit life because nothing ain't going to go good for me. So I need to do certain things to make money. But as a Muslim, I know Allah SWT has made it clear, your risk is written. I think that's why a lot of young people as well, when they become Muslim, a lot of them are not really practicing. So it's easy for them to um, fall back into their old lives, number one. Number two, some of them are practicing, but... When they first come on, when they first become Muslim, they just they just like you said they go cold turkey. Yeah. But they go t- cold turkey in a way that they can't even handle. So after some time, you see them start slipping, slipping slowly, 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 slowly. Before you know it, they're gone. And what is sad is that I've noticed personally, over the years of being Muslim, mm. most of the people who 
fall off the dean for a long period of time. They even become more worse than they was even before they became a Muslim. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. It's scary. I don't know. It's just like I don't know if Allah just. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but it's just like you go. They go to extremes. Do you understand? Know because it's like as well what what people what you see people doing as well. It's like it's like they start making up for time. It's like lost time. You've been Muslim six years, seven years. So you start thinking to yourself, like, I've got to make up for all the time that I missed. It's like mm-hmm. you're going extra hard now doing this, all this type of madness to keep up with the rest of your friends and what have you. So I think you become bitter as well, isn't it? No, you become bitter because how many brothers, I remember even through the process of doing Real Side to Islam, I fell out with so many people. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Because they say, start thinking I'm making videos about them. They think anytime I put a reminder, I'm talking to them, I'm talking about them. SubhanAllah. Wow. So everything becomes personal. Do you get what I mean? A lot of politics, yeah. Ah, it's beyond politics. So, it's definitely not easy. It's definitely not easy. But I feel like for me personally, I can say the only thing what helped me was the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because without that, then it would have been easy for me to be bitter. Without that, it be, been more, be easy. more specific though. Like the Deen itself. Like somebody watching might say, "All right, like I've I've embraced the Deen, mm. but what 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 do I need to do?" Like if you were to give someone say three tips, yeah, what would you say? All right, make sure you've got these three things under lockdown, and then your shelf life will be longer. Okay, I would say the first, first and foremost, first and foremost, the first thing I believe that anybody who becomes a Muslim needs to do is have some basic understanding of the religion. What are you doing? I'm a Muslim. Mm. Okay, cool. But what are you doing now? So know your why. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Okay, I'm a Muslim. Now what? Yeah. Not that I'm just I just took my shahada because it sound everything sounds like the truth to me. Yeah. No, 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 no. There's more than that. I'm a Muslim now. Now what do I have to do? Mm. What What do I need to do now? What's the things I need to do as a Muslim? So, for example, you need to start praying five times a day. Not that oh I'm gonna do it later mm. or when. No, 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 no. I need to do this now. Okay. Do you understand? Mm. And Allah here, when you start praying five times a day and you understand why you're praying. It makes life so much easier. Do you understand? Especially, especially, especially when you're new to the thing, because the praying keeps you away from so much evil, bro. Honestly, five times a day, you know, you could be thinking of going to do something crazy. Mm. It's us time. <laughs> you gotta pray. Mm. You go and pray. You've taken a couple of minutes. It's only five minutes. The last five minutes. Yeah. You've taken five minutes out of your time. You've made wudu. You pray. Now your mind is. It's flickering again. Yeah. I want to go and do this, but Subhanallah, should I do it? You've got you've got a challenge, a challenge against you now. You don't want to be a hypocrite. Exactly. Another thing, what a key factor, Juma. Subhanallah. Well, I'm telling you now, me, me. I'm telling you now, Juma has saved me from haram so many times. Subhanallah. Because there's times I'm gonna do things, bro. <laughs> I was gonna do things, he said. I'm telling you, yeah. as a big man, I'm telling you, I was gonna do things, and I went to that Juma kutba. And I heard some kalam in that kutbah. And I was like, kalas. The power of the, the Jummah khutbah. The power of the Jummah khutbah. The relevance that it had to you. And subhanAllah, it's like many mm. times I'd go to a Jummah khutbah. It's, a lot, it's like Allah sent me to that masjid to hear that reminder. And it just put me back on track. So important. So that's the first thing I would say. When you become a Muslim, know why in it. Know what you got to do. And try and follow a path. And that, that, uh, that I think will be interesting for certain possible people of knowledge that are thinking of their next Jummah Khutbah because it is half term for them to kind of emphasize and do a bit more research like they can have a big impact 100% the Jummah Khutbah has got to be relative to what's going on and you have to look at your audience as well you know you've got obviously if you've got a Jummah Khutbah your Jummah Khutbah is full of uncles and stuff like that there's some messages like that there's no young people then you're gonna have things what 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 what's more appropriate for them to listen to yeah it don't make sense that's just ridiculous you know what i mean but if you're going to if you know that your drummer audience is going to be majority young people you need to talk about things that's relative to them so they can reflect on their life Mm. because that might be the only time that once a week when they come to drummer where they're listening about Allah and his messenger, where they're in one place, where they focus on what the person in front of them is telling them. Most of us, we don't go to talks anymore. Mm. You know, there was a time, Zishan, like even yesterday I went to a talk because I've been out of the country for a long time. I went to a talk. I, I, I've only been back for one week. I heard there was a lecture. I went. I said, boy, I haven't been to a talk in 36, 7 months. This is not good. Yeah, true. This is not good. Like it, well. It's crazy because, bro, just sitting in that gathering, just sitting there, Putting your phone to one side and just listening 
to a reminder. It's so important. Wow. It's so important. Even better is going to class. But I'm just saying that at least we yeah. can do is go, go and listen, listen to hear something about Allah and his messenger. Because it's important. This is our life. So number two, the most important, the second most important thing I believe is your companions, the people that you're around, your friends. Alhamdulillah, I was fortunate that when I became Muslim, some of my friends were Muslim before me. So they're the ones who were giving me dawah. Mm. So it was very easy for me. Well, not say very easy. That's, that's a big statement. But it was easier for me easier, to change yeah. because now I was with them every day and they were my friends. Even though at that time I wasn't rolling with them all the time. But when I became Muslim, it was easy for me to be around them all the time. And the brotherhood was so tight. Like they showed me how to pray, you know. I, my first Ramadan, I stayed with my bre- my friend Yasin. I was with him every day, break fast in his house. He's married, his wife, cooking us food every day. Made my life easy. So the you support you had when you'd become Muslim it was, was priceless. Bro, bro, without that, come on. Yeah. Still got my old friends. What's going on? What are you doing later? We're going so and so. I would eventually I would have crumbled. Mm. Of course I would have crumbled, but because I was true, around man. believers who were strong, they weren't just. Muslim by name, they were praying five times a day. Every time I'm with them, it's time to pray. Do you understand? Fasting a month of Ramadan with them. No longer doing haram, not selling drugs, not doing none of these things, not committing zina, any of these type of things. So if I'm around people like that, by my default is that I'm going to change as well. So that made my life so much easier. So I'd advise anyone, the second thing is your companions. Do you get what I mean? The third thing I would say is that when you become a Muslim, Allah SWT has made the religion easy. Don't make your deen hard for you. Because Allah doesn't want hardship for you. You know? So don't put um, rules it's in front of you. It's interesting. You're saying don't make your deen hard for you. So this isn't talking of someone else. You're, you're no, speaking to the I'm talking the about person. yourself. You have to okay. know yourself. Because look, Shishan, something what could be easy for you. Yeah. Could, 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 could break me in bits mm. so then what's gonna happen you tell me okay let me give an example yeah. when I became Muslim it was easy for me after my first Ramadan because <laughs> I'm not gonna say before that my first after my first Ramadan it was easy for me to stop smoking and it was easy for me not to, to, to stop drinking it was easy for me and to stop partying it was never an issue it was never been a fitness for me alhamdulillah and I used to party all the time do you understand? I used to rave all the time. Anyone who knows me would know that. I used Mad. to be in a club all the time. So it was easy for me to, to stop that. But I know there's some other brothers. It's a fit now. They can't stop. Yeah. So you see me, what I would say to them is, bro, make sure you're praying five times a day. Bro, make sure th- I encourage them. But I keep telling them, Aki, Raven's haram. This is haram. Ah, it's, it's going above their head. But you know when you start doing the other things, mm. like praying five times a day, and you start hanging around good companions, when it comes to doing them type of haram things, you start reflecting on it more because now the people that you're around ain't doing these type of things. Mm. So you start thinking, what's the, what's the point of this? What's the purpose of this? What am I going out for? And you notice that brothers who are even jahil, when they're around practicing brothers, they stop doing many things for a long period of time. It's only maybe sometimes they slip once or twice or if they stop hanging around with them on a long basis, then they start going back to doing things that they used to do. But if you're hanging around people who are doing positive things or are going the right direction in life, by default, you're going to look at them and reflect and say, I want to be like this as well. Do you understand? Yeah. So this is so important, bro. Mm. Very, 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 very wow. important. And a lot of people take this stuff for granted. What's, what's interesting here is you used the kind of base that you had before Islam and you just gave it a different direction. Exactly. Like Umar, he, 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 he just channeled his kind of energy against Islam to then for Islam. Mm-hmm. And that's quite interesting. You didn't particularly change your kind of characteristic you're still mashallah very energetic you're mm. passionate when you talk and uh even even when you're in gambia you see like <laughs> massive people like massacre yeah. even he's like whoa yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. so it's it's interesting that now you've used that passion and you've used that drive and we'll, we'll come to this as well and now mashallah you're directing it towards a charity and you're mm. using it to kind of push something. How important it is, uh, how important is it that people also understand that we're not asking you to change who you are. Mm. It's just refine who you are. Mm. Instead of a jungle, just refine it to a garden that you can appreciate the roses rather than them being all over the place. Yeah, I think what you said is important. Like refining is, is a key word because 
I feel like sometimes when people will come into the deen, they feel like my life's doomed. I can't do anything anymore. And it's not really like that. Yes, Islam has boundaries, but you have to know the boundaries so you can work around them. Do you yeah. understand? Because Allah doesn't tell you don't have fun. You can't do this. You can't do that. But it, it seems that way sometimes when you don't have any understanding, when you don't do no reading, you don't do no research. And life is not that way. And even when I became a Muslim, you know, at the end of the day, the way I looked at it, some people might criticize me or said certain things, but I'll be like, listen, if, if I was a Muslim, you couldn't even come and talk to me. Mm. So you can say whatever you want to say right now, but me and you in the same room, you wouldn't have said a word to me. Mm. So you, you could message me, ah, oh, you brothers are jai or whatever, but I knew the work that we were doing was attracting the same type of people where we were coming from. And it was even encouraging people who wanted to become Muslim, but they were scared of the change to step over and say, you know what? These guys, look at it, they're from the street, they're from the same background as us. They became Muslim. They can do it. Why can't I? They probably think that you're going to have to have biryani with boti and yeah. with the... Yeah, you got to understand. With the raita. you got to have it with the raita, yeah. isn't Come it? Come on, bro. When we That's first become Muslim, saying. the red rice, the green rice with the, the colorings, the pink, the pink milk. <laughs> yeah. That was our life. That was our life. But you know what, Aki? We thank Allah for that because at least we were going to the masajid. They were giving us food to break fast, Aki. Alhamdulillah. Mm. We, were we were trying to think Okay come on Before I was a Muslim I've never eaten Asian food in my life yeah. Pink milk I don't know what that was I've never seen it <laughs> Last week It's supposed to be white I, I don't know what was going on Why is like, it pink? Boy <laughs> Samosas All of that So it opened up It, it made you open up in it and You have it with the keema yeah Everything at we was <laughs> Anything was there We were eating it Do you know what I mean Because we yeah. humbled ourselves And said look This is this is what we're, This is the path we're following now mm. Do you know what I mean So you go in the masjid They provide you that food You eat it so the dean, this is the dean has well, I, has amazing effects, bro. The things that it can do to an individual is amazing. Yeah, you know the pakora and stuff, isn't it? You see, <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. Bro, man. those toilet sessions probably would have. Oh, <laughs> mate, it's not easy, bro. But I'm there now. Can't complain. That brings me on to our our final our final kind of chapter, which is streets mm -hmm. to Islam. And then now a life dedicated to charity. Yeah. It sounds too good to be true. How on earth did these even connect? It's crazy. It's crazy. I think with the charity stuff, that was not part of the program. <laughs> it was not part of the program. Um, if we go back 2015, 2014, 2000, yeah, it was 2015. Still heavily involved doing the road side to Islam, doing dawah, traveling around the world. We were busy at this time. Then um, I can I'll never forget. I was in Eid, Eid in the park, and then there's one auntie came to me and she was like, "Oh, I know you. I heard you're you're from Africa. Cause loads of people think I'm from West Indies or I'm from Jamaica or something like that." Mm. So she's like, "Oh, I see all the work that you're doing, but you should try come back to Africa, see if you can do some work there." So it went in. I heard what she said, but it didn't really. I was like, okay, yeah, whatever, type of thing. Yeah. Didn't really, really penetrate me like that. It, I, I was listening, but I couldn't, I was like, go to Africa and do what? I couldn't really get my head around that. Yeah. So after, maybe about six months after when she said that to me, I said to myself, you know what? Let me just go back. I'm from, I'm from Gambia. So she go planted back. that seed. She planted it, yeah. It took, yeah. It took its time though, okay. but it, it, it eventually grew. Yeah. So I said, let me go back to Africa and see what's going on. Yeah. I've been to been to Saudi, I've been to Egypt, I've been to so many, I've travelled so many, but let me go back home. Yeah. Went back home and I was surprised and I was just like, wow, you know, there's stuff I can do here, you know? Because me, I've always been interested in helping people, I just didn't know how, how I would do it. I remember when I used to live in Egypt, I remember me and Musa, we used to sit at a juice bar and we used to talk about this stuff and I was just like, you know, I'd love to help orphans and help poor kids, but I could never... There was just no avenue. Just mm. them times, it was just big charities. And we used to reach out to the charities, but they never used to open the window for us to come and do any work. Mm. They were just interested in us raising money on our platforms, but they were never interested in us actually phys physically coming and doing the work. So I was always like, in my mind, this is not going to be realistic. And I thought to myself, I can't start my own charity. It just don't make no sense. Mm. So it was, it was always way, way, way at the back of my mind, but it didn't, it was never realistic. So when I went back there, I was like, whoa. You know, there's, there's actually things I can I can possibly do here. So I got invited to do some talks and what have you. So I did some of them. And then I started visiting some schools. And then I started to notice so many things that these schools need. And I knew with the audience that I've got back home, these, we can help these people. Mm. I know people will donate books. I know people will donate pens. I know people would love to do this type of stuff. So that's when I decided to start up the, the Project Spot, supporting the people of tomorrow. 
So I registered it, these times in Gambia. And then I came back and I reached out to people like I knew I reached out to you, reached out to Muslim Bilal, all the brothers that who I'm close with. And I said, look, this is what I want to do. If you can support me, support me. Do you understand? So the first year, um, we, 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 we were just going around doing small things. Me and Muslim Bilal and whatnot were going there, building water wells and stuff like that. And we were helping schools, but we encountered so many problems. Mm. Because the way we wanted to do things, people didn't want to do things our way. So the only solution that we came up with is that we need to build our own school. From scratch. From yeah. scratch, bro. That was the only solution because we've got a standard. We're from the West, bro. Yeah. So there's certain things that is expected that is is standard for us mm. that they weren't ready to do over there. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So when I came back, I linked up with the other Bilal when he was doing Imam clothing. And we discussed, I discussed, I told him, listen, mashallah, you're doing so well with your project, but you're donating money to all these big charities, but you don't know where your money's going. Mm. saying jump on with us the money that you're raising come and spend it with your own hands see what your money's going and he believed in what what i was putting on the table so he joined and then the rest is history bro you know we started our campaigns alhamdulillah now we built the school we've got orphanage we've got 19 kids living there so, now alhamdulillah all orphans lost their parents ajeeb because you started the project and you reached out and that was a very vital time for people to contribute even now it is, but when something's starting, it's so important. Like we, we went over and Alhamdulillah, I was fortunate enough to make a brick and that brick is now part of the building and inshallah it will stay there. Yeah. But people don't understand that that's an integral part. And if you contribute and you help start these things and then support them. Whatever comes after, you, you, yeah. you're part of it. <laughs> the agit, the agit, it can't stop. Mm. It's not possible. Even when you die, it continues because... The bigger the project goes, from when you, you came from the start, as, as much as it grows, the, the more reward you're going to get. Mm. You know, and alhamdulillah, the brothers came. And when I reached out to the brothers, they all, they all um, supported what, what I was putting on the table. And the, most, the second most important thing was, why I was happy is that not only did you support, you came and saw yourself. Because subhanAllah, it's so dangerous to be supporting things and telling your audience you've got your own audience i've got my own audience all the brothers have got their own audience but you're telling them this is going on that's going on but you don't really know if it's going on yeah you can't verify you can't verify it mm. so you're telling them you're standing in front of them donate for the sake of allah we're helping all this help it but you don't know that mm. <laughs> you don't really know that so alhamdulillah you coming and seeing and seeing the project go that's a even a sakina for yourself and for your audience for them to know that listen you know what when i donated that money it really went towards the project because how many times do we donate to organizations and we don't see nothing in return yeah we don't ask no questions and we're cool with it and for me i was i was the key factor was i was not gonna make spot like that give me your money and then just trust me no 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 you don't need to trust me mm. you don't need to trust me follow follow me step by step i don't care because we share the adja me i'm in it for the reward because I know the Sadiqa Jariah, especially working with orphans and these type of things, when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah mm. accepts it, you meet Allah on good terms. SubhanAllah. You know, so it's important. Mm. So that's why we made Spot the people's project, supporting the people of tomorrow. It's not about me. If you go on Spot's Instagram page, maybe we've got about 300 posts. You won't even find 20 posts, pictures of me on there. Because it's not about me, it's the people's project. Mm. You know, so I want this to be something that people, all of us can contribute to and it can be a Sadiqa Jariah for all of us. You know, and that's my intention because Alhamdulillah, I feel like Allah blessed me with the Dawah scene, but I think I, I've, I've reached my, my limit. Mm. You know, the, thing, the scene was changing and I weren't ready to go with the change. So Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me another avenue. And this avenue for me is, is perfect mm. because there's so much work that I do that nobody doesn't see. And I love that. Mm. With the Dawah scene, everybody has to be publicized. I hate that. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? With the charity scene, you have to obviously, if someone donates, you have to prove to them what, what you've done with the money. But there's so many things I can do with my own hands that nobody doesn't need to know. Only Allah knows. Allah mm. saw what I've done, finished. And I love that. And that's why I love this field because actually, sincerity is so hard. Mm. Especially in the times we're living in now. Sincerity. <laughs> Wallahi, man. Everybody should, everyone should be battling with that. Because it's easy to produce, but for the right reasons, right? very difficult. So, alhamdulillah, I think Spot was the right transition for me. And I can't thank Allah enough for that because the work that I'm doing now, I'm so happy about it. And secondly, it's all of the support I'm getting 
it's from Rosa to Islam. Mm. Because if without Rosa to Islam, the people don't know me. So based off the work I was doing with R2I has brought me to this situation. And not with I wouldn't say you as as much because you were with me from the start, but the other brothers who wasn't with us who have joined along the way, it's because of R2I. Mm. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? They built that trust through R2I. They saw the work we were doing R2I. They see us transit, the transition from R2I to charity work. They know what I'm about. And I've opened the door for you to come and verify the work that I'm doing. And everyone's been happy with it, you know. So I feel like now our DAO has changed in just to helping mankind in totality. Yeah. Do you get what it's I mean? Evolved into something. It's evolved into something different. Before, yeah. I'm focused on people on the streets, drugs, guns, crime. I just want to change them people now. I just want to help the needy. I mean, you've you've set a foundation. If somebody now wants to, because before people say, "Oh, how do I do that?" Well, you've shown them. Look, here's a platform that mm. was there. I I gave my time to it. Now it's there. Now you guys slip and do something. Yeah, you can't you. expect one or two people to do everything. Like even with Master Jenna, I don't know how long I have, and there needs to be some people. Like I, I did it without music, without free mixing, without any X, Y, or Z. <laughs> it's hard. Now, now for people to now, no one can say to me, "Oh, you can't do it." Mm. Because I've shown you this mm. is how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's no copyright. Mm. The the even the soundtracks yeah, they're available for download. Mm. But I've I, I've given that. Mm. If tomorrow something was to happen, you guys need to sort it out. Mm. You society is morphing. You got new youngsters coming in, and someone needs to step up. But it's difficult, bro. At the yeah. end of the day, like I said, it's that's the, what you're saying is the truth, and nothing but the truth. But not everybody sees it that way. Yeah. So all you can do, and all. I can do and people who are, are like minded is do your part. Yeah. Inshallah we hope it inspires other people to continue or to do better than us. But if, if they don't, what can you do? What can you do, bro? Just make sure you're not of those people. That's it. And show That's people it. yeah, just show people that look it can be done. Again, the best dawah is dawah that you show people, you 100%, practice the deen. Hundred percent practically. Hundred percent. Before you even open your mouth, people just seeing you is enough, actually. Mm. But some people may not know about the project so mm -hmm. you you went to gambia yeah you bought a plot of land yeah and your plan was to make a a, a masjid yeah a a school for orphans correct yeah, yeah, yeah that's correct because the re one of the main reasons why we focus on the orphans because when we went to when, when we went to africa we saw that the orphans were being mistreated the orphanages that mm, I went just, to. Just, just, mm. just before, sorry to interrupt, but masjid, uh, a school uh, for orphans, as they live there in boarding. As yeah, well. it's a boarding. It's it's a bo yeah, 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 it's a boarding school. Mm. They live there. So the first thing what I noticed was the living conditions of the children, mm. and I was just like, "Whoa!" You go to schools, it's 80, 60, 100 orphans. Maybe the 20 beds, majority of them sleeping on the floor, wow. six, seven, eight, sharing one mattress. It was crazy. And I was just like, this ain't how it's meant to be, man. Mm. Orphans ain't meant to be like this. Mm. You understand? A child has lost his mum and dad and this is his situation. So I said, no, 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 no. What we're going to do, we're going to do something that inshallah to Allah is going to be a game changer. You know? So that's why when we built our orphanage, Every single person with the permission of Allah who's come there has been pleased and has said they've never seen an orphanage like this in Africa. Because the way we built it, we built it in a way that if our own kids were there, they, we could, they could live in this place. And that's our standard, you know. Some people were saying to me, why are you spending so much money on the tiles? Why are you spending so much money on the beds, this, that? I said, bro, <laughs> this is a standard to us. You know, would you want your kids to have anything less than this? They will say no. So I say, why are you asking me that question? Why? Because mm -hmm. in Africa, they deserve less. Is that what you think? I said, me, if I do anything, I do it to perfection, to the best of my ability that Excellent, I know. Isn't it? Yeah. That's it, bro. If I, I do the best I can do, I don't cut corners. Do you get what I mean? I maximize on my resources. If people are supporting me, I'm going to put the money into the project and project it so people can see what I'm doing. And alhamdulillah, everybody who comes to our school, they're happy there. They're comfortable. They've seen the masjid. It's plush. It's like a message in the UK, bro. <laughs> no one can come there and say, oh, I feel uncomfortable here. Our toilets, the sleeping area. Well, like the sleeping area is better than my house. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? <laughs> it's better than my house. It's plush. It's and nice. that's the idea because this is what the kids deserve. You know, if you're not, if you're doing something for the sake of Allah, do it to your best. 
Mm. Don't start, oh, they are because the kids don't have nothing. They're poor. Let them have anything. No, no, I don't believe in that. This is from our tradition. Any time the scholars or any uh, things would happen in our past and our empires, it would be done to a, a specific standard of excellence. You see, you got to do, at the end of the day, lower human beings, you've got your limitations. But alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm standing in front of people. I'm telling people to support me. People are supporting me. So why am I not going to put the money in? Mm. You know, what? if I don't have the money, then that's different. Yeah. I can't talk about something I don't know But people are supporting me they, they, They're saying Yeah Abu Bakr Here's a hundred pound Here's a thousand pound Here's two thousand pound Put it into the project I'm going to put it in I'm not going to say No 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 Let me just I don't need to put it in Because these kids Don't know nothing better You know SubhanAllah I remember When we were building The entrance of the mosque Because the entrance of the mosque Is all glass mm. And they were like the, the people there were telling me No You can't do this You know They'll break the glass The kids are like Listen leave me alone mm. Maybe the kids in your school Will break the glass But the kids mm. in our school Ain't going to break the glass Because we're going to teach them mm. Well like We've never had any problem with that Kids That's breaking true. glass Or anything like that No Because the first thing We focus on in, With our kids Is tarbiya. tarbiya When they come in What do we do We teach them hygiene mm. We spend time with them We show them how to be you understand? We don't just bring them in your in a class learning. No, 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 no. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. We show them how to go to the toilet. Show them how to wash their hands. We show them how to brush their teeth. We show them how to to move around our premises. Mm. To know not to be running up and down the corridors. Know not to bring food into the sleeping area or into the. Mo- we teach them these things, mm. and then this is what they this is what they they reflect on. So we've never had that problem, alhamdulillah. But people don't want to take the time to teach these pe- these kids. At the end of the day, these kids are going to be adults one day. Yeah. These are ground roots. We were taught these things from kids, you know. But sadly, what I've noticed with a lot of projects is like they don't want to do that. They just want to. Oh, it's in Africa. Oh, it's in Pakistan. It's in Bangladesh. Let me just be, let me just let me just build anything and leave it to the people. No, 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 no. I don't agree with that. That's why I don't try to go anywhere. I don't try to. People have offered me money, Zizan. Wallahi, and said to me, "Listen, I've seen what you've done. I want to give you eighty grand." Build a school I say no I said bro See the grey's in my bed bro <laughs> mm. This ain't no joke This ain't a money thing You know mm. This ain't a money thing This is a real commitment This is a lifetime commitment It's not a joke Do you get what I'm saying Emotionally invested Everything into, yeah. bro You can't do wow. this You have to do this Wholeheartedly You know And that's why I Always when I say to brothers Enough brothers have said to me They want to build projects In other countries And I say to them Are you from that country yeah. If not Leave me alone Because I know I can't commit to it. Mm. If I know you're from Pakistan, for example, and you want to build a project in Pakistan, I trust you, I know you, I will work with you. Because mm. I know you're going to go there. Yeah. You've got family there. You've got, you've got things going on. Do you mm. get what I mean? That you're going to commit to it. Because what happened is, so much people are building projects and they're leaving them afterwards and the projects are going down the drain. Mm. And that's people's money, bro. People's hard work money that they donated to you. Now you've built something and just left it to the people. You go to some schools. I'm telling you, we visited schools. I don't want to mention no names. Charities that are known here in the UK. And we've gone to the school there and, 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 and the Ustaz is asking us, can we help them with food? Charities here who are raising millions. But you go on their Facebook, you go on their, their website, they got, I've got orphanage in this country, I've got this school in this country. But you don't even know, if you go to some of these schools, they're suffering because they don't open it in a way that you can go and visit these schools. But I'm in Gambia, I go to any, I don't care, any child, I go to their school, I want to see what's going on. Because mm. when, especially when we were, we were doing our research, because we're thinking we're going to go to these charities, their school's going to be amazing. So we can take an example from them. Yeah. Charities are raising 20, 30 million a year. I'm expecting to see something plush. Yeah. I'm not expecting to go in there and seeing kids with ripped up clothes. I'm mm. not expecting that to go in there with you these kids. That, yeah? Well, lie, I saw that. You go in there with kids, they ain't even got shoes. They, the, the, the teachers are asking us, can we help them with feeding? Feeding, you know, these. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So. This charity stuff has Why made me see going? things. A lot knows best. That's what I'm saying. It's like, bro, in our school, we've got 18 kids. We've got a land 100 by 50. I could have 150 kids in there if I wanted to. Mm. And imagine if I had 150 kids in the school now and I post that online, everybody would support me. Yeah. They'll be like, whoa, look at that. This is amazing. So this is what people do, Aki, to get people's money. But I know the responsibility, Aki, it's not a joke. 18 is quite interesting. It's quite a modest number. It's like the amount of kids we have in one class in a primary school. You see? Because we're taking it slowly. Don't get me mm. wrong. Our aim is to have more kids. But, yeah. bro, we're learning as we're going. You're dealing with somebody's life. Yeah. You Zishan, it's not a joke. Man. It's not a joke. Like, in, 
it might sound blase, it sounds fun. You know, when people message me, ah, how did you just start doing this work? It's amazing. They, I, I'm not being, no disrespect to anyone watching this video or listening to the podcast. This ain't fun. <laughs> yeah. This is real stuff. You're dealing with people's emotions. You're dealing with kids who are traumatized. Mm. Kids who have lost their mother, their father, been living with grandma, extended families from a young age. Mm. It's no joke. Kids who have got no financial support. No, they ain't got anything. And now you're their everything. It's not easy, bro. It's not easy. It might yeah. look, when someone, you post a picture and like, it looks so nice. It looks, it looks amazing. Oh, look at him. Mashallah. What he's doing is amazing. Looking after orphans. Accurate. Well, like, you, you will see things and you, you, you can't even hold back the tears. Mm. A child, you'll be chilling with some of the kids. You'll be like, what's wrong? Oh, I miss my parents. What do you say? Oh. What do you say, Aki? How do you prepare yourself for that type of stuff? You know, so, this type of work is no joke. It looks amazing and it is amazing, but the commitment is no joke. Is that that's going on behind the That's scenes? why a lot of people just build projects and they go. It's like a mountain, isn't it? We we all see what's on top, but most of the mountain it's underground and people don't see that. You don't they only see. see what's above the ground. Maybe what's underground is is bigger than what's what's mm. what's up, you know. But it's an amazing thing. And you know, I thank Allah anyway because I feel like all the brothers who know me and I've been working with over the years, they all came together to help me with this project. It was a collective thing. I can't take credit for it. Mm. You know what I mean? Collectively, I think that like, we achieved something and I've showed people that there's an avenue for people to get involved in doing this type of work. You know? Like we were doing the 2K challenge. Mm. Telling people, raise 2,000 pound Ramadan, come and see your money. Mm. You're welcome. You don't have to come, mm. but you're welcome. It's not even that expensive to you get see, there either. There you go. Do you get what I mean? Thomas Cook, 300 pound you got a flight mm -hmm. you're there <laughs> Thomas got the airline so you're saying that people can come over so if someone raises money mm -hmm. you're saying you, you you're speaking off camera as well that yeah. there are literally cars of people that come and that can come they can raise money and see how it's spent 100 percent, they're welcome bro we encourage that mm. we encourage that because i know for a fact when you see your money's getting spent you're going to support what you're going to support what we're bringing to the table yeah do you get what i mean because you're going to be you're going to be confident I support I know, that because I know people ask me as well. Oh, I'd love to go. And to be honest, people ask as well. Oh, you managed to uh, get to Africa. It's nice. Mm. But the thing is, sometimes when you're going to a, a place that you wouldn't be caught dead going to Pakistan, Bangladesh, yeah. if you didn't know anyone there. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So, so here, what was uh, obviously you? I trusted you. So, mm. um, even my mom was like, "Oh, you know, should you really be going?" And I was like, "Look, I know him, and this is this is." I took time off work. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember. And, I remember. and we went, and you know what? It was, it, it, it was difficult there, obviously, being with people of different personalities. It's, or whatnot. it's a new experience. But it's an experience, that, alhamdulillah, I'm very proud of. Alhamdulillah. That I, I can say, alhamdulillah, I went there because it's all well and good saying, oh, we're part of an ummah. Mm. But to, to actually go and meet the ummah, sit with the ummah, smile with the ummah. It's different. It's, it, bro, it's, it's different. It's different. And you have to remember, you're a teacher. So it's like, all the time, you're in a classroom, mixing with different people's personalities. But when you go to another country, you meet people with complete different personalities. Mm. Like, I remember when you first came. I know you lot were a bit shy. You didn't know yeah. how to deal with the kids when we went to the other schools. But after like an hour, you lot are running around with the kids. Yeah. It's like, you just see everyone's normal. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But it's just that you have to just come out of your shell, so to speak. And well, like these kids, they appreciate seeing people, different people, mm. you know, different from different race, different cultures. Just coming here to visit them, makes it feel valued like, as well. It's amazing. It's like it's orphan, a game changer. You, as an orphan, you're kind of discarded, and yeah, you're not that important. And suddenly, you you got visitors that are coming to see you. You see, it's crazy, and the kids always say that they're so happy when people come. And that's why even this year, what we're trying to do is we're hoping, inshallah, that. We're trying to get a minibus at the moment. So once we get that minibus, we want to encourage people like between the months of November and um, April next, this November this year and April to come. We want to set dates and let groups come out. I think you've, you've opened a very um, valuable avenue for people that, that feel that they don't have a connection to uh, African countries. Here, yeah. they, they have a reliable organization, reliable mm. people that they can go and you're saying literally hand the money yourself you don't yeah 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 money. yeah yeah you don't and this is this is that, i think that's so important because 
subhanallah i know there's so many muslims have stopped giving charity mm. because they, they've lost trust mm. they've lost trust you're donating your money you don't know where it's going but we're saying okay put that aside bring the money pay for your flight you come and meet us on the other side we'll take you to the places and you distribute if you can't, you can give us the money, we'll distribute. But you are welcome to come and do it yourself. We don't have no calls or issues with that. And subhanAllah, Aki, I'm telling you, <laughs> these are the amount of people who have come to Gambia. And I'm just like, whoa, we've had people old enough to be my mum and dad. Asian uncles, uncles from all over the world. Uncles, I'm man. telling you, I've come and donated and they're happy and they've been supporting the project from the start so many people have been supporting it you know when someone donate you don't know who they are yeah. don't know whether you don't know whether they're young or old people have messaged us i want to come and visit come i've had uncles come with their daughter uncles come with their sons come with their wives coming to see what's going on and they've been they've been impressed and to this day they're still supporting us and there's there's so many lessons that we can take from this story that's why i i, I thought it was very important for us to kind of share this journey and people doing this uh, 10 year challenge or we got our own 10 year challenge i know i know you know when i saw it, it would have been great for us to do it but yeah. these type of waves like that's why i told you you see the times we're living in i can't get down with this stuff you said yeah, 10 year true. challenge for what even i was like flipping it this is too much for me so that's why i'm just like i feel like i found my path you know what? I, I don't think I even had your pictures from uh, 10 years ago that were online. Bro, you, you pictures of you? No yeah. way. Uh, you were, you were never on no picture. Uh, you, yeah. you picture. I can tell you to take a picture. You say no. You was never on that, bro. Picture. So, no, you ain't seen a picture of you, bro. But, oh, Ajib, wait. man. 10 years, they flew by so quickly. Long time, bro. May Allah, you know, grant us a tawfiq to do more. I mean, I mean. And I mean. may Allah utilize you guys that are watching. Um, that have bothered to make it to this far uh, <laughs> of the video and the podcast. I mean, I mean. Uh, definitely try something. There's a narration to the effect that if you, you know, walk towards Allah, Allah's mercy will run towards you. Mm -hmm. So definitely start. Start somewhere, even if it's something small. Mm -hmm. As long as you're passionate about it and you're applying the correct knowledge of the Deen to it not doing it jahil flex mm -hmm. inshallah it will it will flourish and inshallah, inshallah in 10 years you'll be making your own video with uh with, with someone else inshallah it's true inshallah. i'll put the links to spot in the description if you want to um just check out the project see how it's progressed over time i'll put my video when i went as well and inshallah check it out and uh, yeah start raising and inshallah for those of you that are planning to get married or planning to do um you know honeymoon or even just holiday with your wife hair it's uh, attached meaning to it consider this stuff i see mashallah some people when they get married they, even now they're conscious of all right rather than feeding people that already get fed why don't we no it's true because even people subhanallah even people have messaged me i said like i'm getting uh, i'm getting married the money we we're going to use for the thing can we can we send it to you can you go and feed people so, i'm telling you i've seen some messages and i'm it's touched me well like people are oh. definitely changing but like i said people are looking for real avenues because they want proof mm. they want proof and alhamdulillah with spot we can provide that you know it's not just a one-way service you know you get you always get something back in return inshallah inshallah but jazakallah bro Barakallah fi inshallah bro. we'll uh, we'll have to touch a base again definitely inshallah. very soon definitely and definitely. uh yeah we'll see you guys next time inshallah inshallah assalamu alaikum <laughs> <laughs> Are you bringing it back to Smart Jedi? What's so good, you? Say Smart Jedi.